Do you have a friend who just seems to know what it is that you need before you even know that you need it? A friend that just shows up in these practical ways and has such this uncanny ability to help in just the way that you need it. Well, that friend is probably an Enneagram type too. They're the serving, giving, helpers on the Enneagram. They're the relational powerhouses. And you know what? We need to learn to love them better because we often take them for granted. That's what we're talking about today at Terraforma. Stick around. Hey, good morning. Welcome to Terraforma Church. I'm Justin. I'm our pastor. It's my privilege to welcome you here. Man, you have found a church of idealistic dreamers that really believe that we're joining Jesus to bring heaven to earth. We're working and striving and, and, and joining together to, to be a community that's about what's beautiful in this world, to, to be a community that's about bringing hope and, and help and life into our community. And we do that by gathering together to learn and grow about Jesus and, and grow more like him and scattering out to serve our community in love. And we take that mission very seriously around here. And it's a lot of fun. We're having a great time. So we're thrilled you could find us. We're in the middle of a series about the Enneagram and we're walking through this gospel worldview as we look at the lens of this pretty cool personality thing called the Enneagram. Lots of resources in the Terraforma app. Man, be sure to like, subscribe, connect with us on social media. And when we're online only right now, um, every other week, Man, be active in the chat. Let us know that you're here. Watch live with us at 10 o'clock and uh, let us know what's going on. There's always a, a good chat happening over on Facebook and also over on YouTube. And we're thrilled, however you found us, that you did find us. I want to remind our local families, we are meeting again in person next Sunday and our kids' environments are open. I feel so passionately about this because I think our kids got some of the worst of the last season of our lives. And listen, parents, we've got to get our kids reconnected. Your kids need to see their friends at church. They need that presence of the other adult in their life. Man, get them out to Independence High School where we're gathering together in person. We're having a great time. It's a, it's a beautiful building. We've got all kinds of COVID safety protocols in place. We promise we're ready to host you. And we can't wait to connect with you next Sunday, Independence High School. Terraforma Online, it's here every week. You'll find us. And uh, if you're translocal, this is a great option for you. And uh, man, let's get our service underway. Thank you so much for joining us. Sing all these pieces broken, scattered. All these pieces broken and scattered. And mercy gathered, mended and Empty-handed, but not forsaken. I've been set free. I've been set free. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Blind, but now I see, and I can see it now. I can see the love in your eyes, laying yourself down, raising up the broken to. Sing, you take our failure, you take our failure, you take our weakness, you set your treasures in jars of Take this heart, Lord, I'll be a vessel, the world to see your life in me, oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I can see the love in your eyes. 
yourself down Raising up the broken to Sing the sound, sing amazing grace, how sweet the sound. church manager and I get to be your host today. We're so glad that you're here. Hey, we would love to connect with you. You can do that by subscribing, liking, following, but click on the link that you'll find in the chat here or you can scan the QR code. Hey, for every connection card that's um, completed, we will donate $5 to a scatter partner. But this is your first time here or you've been here a long time. Here at Terraforma, we believe that every person has a next step towards their growth in following Jesus. Hey, maybe your next step is by completing that connection card, or maybe it's to sign up to serve or to give, or maybe you're ready to declare your faith through baptism. Maybe you have a new baby or two new babies in your household that you would like to have dedicated. And whatever it is, we'll make it easy and we're gonna be here right alongside you. Hey, thanks again for tuning us in. Hope you enjoy the message. Hey, Terraform, I do want to receive our offering today. Thank you for giving. Thank you. We are in this uh, season. We're ramping up expenses. We're reopening. We're relaunching together as a church. And so we're kind of coming out of hibernation in some ways. Now, we never closed. We were operational. We, our mission was active. We were moving towards our goals every day during the pandemic and all through the shutdown. Uh, but... 
Now that we're gathering it in person and we're beginning to look towards the fall, we do have increased expenses. And so we appreciate all of your giving. We appreciate it small and large. However, you are joining in the story of generosity that we're writing together. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for those of you who give regularly. Man, this, it helps us so much with our budgeting process. It helps us even through seasons like the summer where everybody goes on vacation. Man, it's just an awesome gift uh, that you're giving to your leadership team. We are, uh, uh, we're a generous church and uh, this is what we do. And we, so we don't apologize about inviting you to join us. We think it's a really beautiful thing. It's a worthwhile cause. You can give at terraforma.church slash give. You can give through the Terraform mobile app and you can give through a text to give or even old fashioned snail mail. All of those things are great options. Thank you. May God bless you as you give. Hey, good morning, Terraforma Church. I'm so thrilled to be with you for Terraforma Online today. We're going to continue our series about you. Here's what we believe about you. We believe that you're pretty special. We believe that we've never met an ordinary human being and we never will because we believe that you were created on purpose and for a purpose with, with incredible intentionality, even artistic mastery, that you were made unique and beautiful and wonderful to reflect the image of God to this world that we actually believe that in the face, in the story of every human being that we meet, we can learn something remarkable about God. And we also believe you were created for a purpose. We believe you were, you, you're invited by virtue of your creation to join with Jesus in this beautiful unfolding story of redemption, where everything that's broken is being made beautiful because of the power of the gospel of Christ. And it's our great privilege to join him in doing this. And so we, this is what we believe about you. And so it is a worthwhile thing for us to kind of talk about you. Talk about what makes you unique, what makes you tick. And that's what we're trying to do here is try and help us understand ourselves so we can better relate to God. We can better relate one to another and we can have a more authentic honest relationship with ourselves. And to do this, we're using an ancient tool called the Enneagram. Now, don't let this creep you out. The Enneagram is this typological personality framework. I know the symbol can be a little off-putting, and if you start Googling it or researching it, some of you are gonna be like, oh my gosh, I love what I'm seeing. And some of you are gonna be like, this is kind of weird. And, and uh, I mean, you'll find a lot of different 
spiritual traditions that kind of claim ownership of this. Uh, but what we're learning is it is an incredibly valuable tool for telling yourself the truth. It's an incredibly valuable tool for you to have an honest conversation with your motivations, to uncover the why behind your behaviors, these kind of core beliefs that have driven you to behave and act and believe certain ways. And what we're doing, I'm not an Enneagram expert, I'm actually a, an expert in New Testament theology. And so what we're doing is we're looking specifically at this tool, the Enneagram, through the lens of the gospel of Jesus. See, we believe that in the person of Jesus, we find the complete revelation of the character and nature of God. That, that in the person, in the message, in the work of Jesus on our behalf, we find the answer to all of the human problems. And so while the Enneagram might help us identify where we've gone wrong, we believe that the ultimate solution that we're looking for, this craving to become the person that we can only be um, with, with, with the help of God is, is going to be found in the message of the gospel of Christ. So uh, the Enneagram, if you don't know it, it's, it's this framework. There are nine personality types, each identified with a number. And with, uh, you know, the, you'll find different labels on each of those. And this is not about labels or limits. I want to tell you that up front. It's about uh, growth and self-discovery. And so you've got to learn to kind of interact with this in a really intelligent way. You've got to learn to kind of say, hey, that, that looks like me or that doesn't. You know, you can feel free to reject those parts uh, that, that don't really help you. And uh, to really appreciate those parts that, that do help you, that help you find your way towards a more authentic story. See, Jesus knows who you are. He knows who you have been, and he also knows who you could be with his help. And he loves you for all of it. He's chosen to enter your story with you, even while you are at your very worst, and help you towards your very best through the power of the cross and the resurrection. And so in that way, we actually find the Enneagram to be a helpful tool in our journey of sanctification and discipleship, of us learning to become more like Jesus, to place everything under the lordship of Jesus. So that's what we're doing in this series. Uh, there's lots of resources in the Terraform app. You can find your type. There are tests there. There are other resource links there. And I do want to encourage you about the tests. Don't let the tests tell you who you are. You know who you are. Uh, let the tests kind of guide you maybe towards this, uncover some of your motivations, but really it's about self-discovery. And so if you want to want to push back with the tests or argue, say hey, that actually isn't me or this isn't me, I mean, there's a, any test they could ever come up with is going to get some, some things wrong and it's going to make some generalizations. And so don't let it label you or limit you. Let it start a conversation between you and maybe the people you love the best and trust the most. And you kind of discover what is it? What is my why behind the what? What are the motivations that are driving me? Because in that place, then we can begin to find our way toward growth. All right, let's dive into Let's talk about type twos, Enneagram type twos. These are called the helper or the giver. These are empathetic. They are generous. They are kind and warm people. Uh, if you have a type two in your life, you, it feels like you won the lottery because they're this incredible friend. They have this almost un, unbelievable supernatural ability to anticipate your needs and to feel your feelings before you even know what they are and before you can even really get in touch with your own self. They've kind of absorbed that. They're, they're incredible in this way. It feels like they're mind readers sometimes. They're very considerate. That is a good word for twos. They're considerate. They're also highly involved in the lives of the people around them. Twos have um, the habit of making people their project. They're going to show up. They're going to come to the rescue. Uh, they speak the language sometimes of advice. That's what it sounds like when they come near you. Uh, don't complain about a problem near a two because the two is going to pull out their essential oils or, or give you the you know, 15 remedies that they use for this. And they're the kind of people that carry around like, you know, the, 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 their little medicine kit. They're going to have like an aspirin in their purse and they're ready to, because they want to serve you. They want to help you. They're just there for that. And um, man, if, if you have a complaint about something one week, that two has been thinking about how to solve that problem for you all week long. Uh, and they'll, they may show up. They may show up with dinner, and you won't, you won't even see it coming. They'll just be this incredible casserole, and they're just you know, prepared, and ding-dong, it comes. And, and sometimes they can be so involved in the lives of their people that it feels a little bit like they're grabbing the wheel while you're trying to drive. Uh, it can feel sometimes so um, their help is going to come to you whether you want it or not. 
and the advice can feel a little bit unsolicited and you're just a little bit like, hey pal, like, hey, back off. Uh, but this is the way that they speak love. They speak love by showing up for the people um, that they love very much and doing practical things from their helpers, their givers. Type twos need to be needed. That is how they find happiness and fulfillment. Um, but there's two sides to this. They need to be needed so much that um, sometimes all of this loving and serving and giving, when they're healthy, it's coming from this altruistic and benevolent place. And they're doing it because they know they were made to serve. And it just brings them joy to serve you. Uh, but in an average place, in an unhealthy place, their gifts come with strings. There's a price for all of this serving. And what they expect is that you are going to reciprocate, that they're gonna serve you and love you because what they're, con what they're constantly afraid of, honestly, is being rejected and alone and unlovable. And at some point in their lives, twos have believed this narrative that they need to be useful to you, they need to show up and be helpful to you, or maybe you won't love them anymore. When you think about twos, you think about sometimes um, those moms and dads who have made their kids their projects. And they wonder, when this kid leaves, when they graduate, uh, what, who, who, who am I even if I'm not a mom or I'm not a dad? You think about that person who thinks about retirement and he is so indispensable. He's made himself so indispensable in his workplace. His coworkers couldn't imagine what he or she, what they would do without them. And yet, uh, they think about retirement and they think, well, what, who, who am I gonna be without this? because they're finding their identity in the people that they're trying to serve and help. And uh, this can be a problem. The model, mother or father, think about a type two, is this ideal parent, that, the one that you always wish that you had. And if you actually have a type two as a parent, man, what a blessing that is, right? They just are there, they're just so helpful. They're, they're incredible listeners and they're so empathetic and they're just, they want to do for you what they can. Um, when you, when you kind of see that moment, you know, where the mom reaches over and starts like cutting up the dinner on their 13 year old's plate and the 13 year old's like, mom, like, what are you doing right now? Like, come on. That, that is type two behavior, right? It's like, well, I just, I'm just here to help. I just wanna help you, I just wanna help you. Like, get your hands out of my food. Like, I, I can do this myself. You know what, I, I, I got you these shoes. The other ones looked like they were running a little bit ragged. And that's, that's what type twos do, man. They just show up. Uh, and they will do this whether or not you ask them to do this. If you are the person in your friend group always giving the best advice, everybody seems to seek you out, uh, you, and you kind of relish that. You kind of love to be needed in their lives. You kind of love to be the hero of the story in someone else's life, and that makes you feel really good. It makes you feel great. Uh, matter of fact, you're pretty proud of that. If you're honest with yourself, some of the time when you're doing all this helping, it's because you are in love with the idea of being the helper and you wanna be the person that shows up. You wanna be the person that's needed. You wanna be the person that's indispensable and it makes you feel good. And so this is the problem. You begin to see this kind of shadow side of the two. Listen, I'll tell you, as a pastor, the church doesn't work without twos. Without twos, we don't have a setup crew that unloads our trailers and sets all these environments up. Without twos, we don't have kids' environments because they'll sit there, they'll serve uh, an, an hour uh, back in the nursery so you can go to church because they really, and this is the problem, they'll sometimes hide from their own needs by obsessing over the needs of the people around them. As intuitive as they are, uh, with everybody else's problems and everybody else's emotions and everybody else's needs, if you ask them, what can I do for you, now you have a problem. I mean, they will light themselves on fire to keep you warm. But if they're freezing, you'll never hear about it. You look cold, I'm fine, I'm, I'm good, I'm fine. What can I do for you? You know what, I'm good. Because they've believed this toxic narrative that if they need help, well then they're no longer useful, do you see? They're no longer acceptable. And so this is a problem because twos, we wanna love you too. And we take you for granted. 
uh, we, we do take you for granted because you're so available. You're so ready to help. You lean in so much to service that we just kind of let you serve us and we take it for granted. They volunteer on all the committees. They're involved in, in all of the projects. They have a hard time saying no, especially to the people um, whose approval matters to them. And it's interesting, if you are a two, your spouse sometimes is exempt from your serving. Sometimes the people closest to you, the men or women closest to you, you've sort of been like, you know what? Um, I have them, so I don't need to impress them or flatter them or seduce them. I don't need to sort of, you know, get them uh, to, to need me because they're mine. And so you'll like neglect your spouse and you'll serve everybody else. I mean, you'll be out there trying to do everything for, for the pastor or for the neighbor or for the school principal or the teacher, for your kids and your husband or wife. You'll just kind of forget about them because they're just sort of safe and you kind of got them. And this is interesting little um, struggle that you have. Um, type twos, your, your course in, and this is going to trigger you when I say this. So just buckle up. Your course in is pride. Now, that seems counterintuitive. What do you mean? Uh, this is the Enneagram type who is most focused on the needs of others. How can you say that's proud? That seems self-centered. But here's the problem. The way that you serve everybody else and never let anybody else serve you, the way that you show up for everybody else and never let anybody else show up for you, that's pride. Uh, and if you think about this, um, this is kind of this idea, like I don't want to be needy. I have a very high, uh, view of myself and twos can become very image conscious like I am obsessed with the image of being the most helpful of being the one who serves and when it gets out of balance twos will sometimes explode in an outburst of anger when they're not appreciated no one's saying thank you they feel like they're showing up for everybody else and no one's showing up for them you know uh the twos are the kind of per people that are going to plan their their friends the most incredible surprise birthday parties and it's going to have every detail perfect and it's going to be oh it's going to be remarkable it's like how you you must be a mind reader with how well you could pull this event off and then when their birthday comes around they're gonna, not going to tell anybody what they want but they're gonna be real disappointed when nobody does for them like they did for you. Uh, nobody, nobody planned them a perfect party. And you know what? If you were to ask them, hey, what do you want for your birthday? Can I, can I do a party for you? They'll tell you no, because this is the problem. This is where the shadow side of pride is kind of preventing them from being known and loved because they will disassociate with their own needs and, and try and find their identity in the needs and the emotions and the people around them. Okay, examples in history. Uh, I think Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, last time Eleanor and I had a chat, I think that she was probably an Enneagram type too. Uh, I think that Nancy Reagan, also great friend of mine, Nancy Reagan, uh, I think that she's probably an Enneagram type too. Richard Simmons. I've never met Richard, but I imagine he's an Enneagram type too. Dolly Parton. Oh, man. Uh, if you want, on, a, on your next road trip, listen to the NPR Dolly Parton's America podcast. It is just a gem. It's incredible. I wasn't a fan of Dolly Parton. Now I'm a huge fan of Dolly Parton. And I think she's an Enneagram type two. I think Maya Angelou is a type two. I think Fred Rogers is probably a type two. In scripture, I think that Martha, the sister of Mary and Lazarus, is, is a good type two. Barnabas might be a type two. I think that Mary, the mother of Jesus, is probably an Enneagram type two. I think that the Good Samaritan is a good example in, in the story of Jesus in, in, in Luke of an Enneagram type 2. Uh, in pop culture, Ann Perkins from Parks and Rec. Uh, maybe one of the better examples is Molly Weasley from Harry Potter. I think Hagrid is probably also a type 2 in Harry Potter. Um, I think that PETA from The Hunger Games, probably a type 2. And uh, my favorite type 2 in all of literature has to be Samwise Gamgee. Um, Sam. Sam, Sam, Sam. Sam is so out of touch with his own needs, he's literally living to please and meet um, Mr. Frodo's needs. He just has positioned himself where Frodo's emotions actually become Sam's emotions, and he actually has no emotions of his own. He just lives uh, for Frodo. And uh, I can't carry the ring for you, Mr. Frodo, but I can carry you. That is Enneagram Type 2 at their very best. And I'll tell you, Enneagram Type 2s, thank you. Thank you for carrying us.
Thank you for being the kind of people that show up. Uh, when we don't know which way is up, you're there. You're present in our lives in a way that is just remarkable. We love you. Um, Jorah Mormont from Game of Thrones, he's a type two. Um, one of the key issues for type twos is removing the conditions on love. And this will make the difference between healthy and unhealthy for you. When you learn to love unconditionally, when you learn that Jesus loves you unconditionally, that you can receive from Jesus love that is not determined by what you can do for him or how you can serve him or all the great things that you do to show up, but just to learn to sit at his feet and receive from him. Um, that, that is your road towards health and integration. And you might have to do that in solitude. Type twos need to learn to be um, retreating, to get away from people, because if there's people in the room you are naturally going to move and react towards their needs and neglect your own. And so get alone sometimes. Not every day, but, but often enough. You know, Jesus had the habit of retreating to lonely places, getting away from the crowds, so he could sit and receive and reconnect from his heavenly Father. He could replenish to charge the batteries. Because you know what, type twos? You fear being depleted. Because if you run empty... And you already have this sneaking suspicion, this false narrative, that if you can't show your worth to other people by what you do for them, then they'll, they won't love you. You aren't acceptable. You aren't gonna, you know, they, they aren't gonna, they aren't gonna have enough love for you. You'll be alone. Well, then if you're empty and you don't have the resources to keep serving in this way, it's sort of like this threat to your very worth. And so you get resentful about being depleted and being tired all the time. Um, Listen, type twos, you are the type to light yourself on fire to keep everybody else warm. But you need to learn to care for yourself. You need to learn to take care of you, to, 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 to replenish those batteries. And I want to talk to you about a story uh, in Scripture where this is the reality. So let's turn to Scripture. Man, Jesus uh, himself uh, demonstrated a lot of behavior that looks like a type two, right? the way he would show up for people and constantly be offering practical help. When he talked about his own mission, Jesus came and he said that he came to serve and not to be served. And I also think about that moment in the Last Supper where Jesus stands up from the table and he takes off his rabbi's cloak and he puts around his waist the towel of a servant and he washes his disciples' feet in this act of beautiful, sacrificial service and practical love. Uh, that's very type two type behavior and I love it. I think it's a beautiful thing. But I wanna tell you a story about a type two that's a little less healthy, a little less integrated than Jesus. And he, uh, she actually crosses paths here with Jesus. This is one of Jesus's favorite people. And um, this family, uh, they're Martha, Mary, and their brother Lazarus. And uh, Martha is the head of this household. And she's dutiful, and she's amazing, and she's popular. And Jesus comes to visit, and I want to watch, I want you to watch how this unfolds, because I think here, what you have is Martha is a type two. And so Jesus comes, and, and man, she's going to be ready. She's got to be a good hostess. She's got to have everything ready to go. And you got to put all these dishes of food together. And it might have been even like an unannounced visit, but you know, twos are ready for that kind of thing. They're, they just, this is where they shine. Um, and she gets a little aggravated and annoyed uh, with the people around her. They aren't serving like she expects them to serve. So here we go. I'm in Luke chapter 10, verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were, were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Now just time out for a second. Um, this is, a, this is a famous story, and, and if you want a more in-depth exegetical treatment of this passage, we've taught on this uh, several times before at Terraforma Church, and you can kind of find those in the Terraforma app. But what's happening here between Mary and Martha, um, Mary's probably like a type four, and um, here's Martha, a type two. Here's Mary deciding to sit at the feet of Jesus, and an interesting note, that is the position that, a, that a, a, an official disciple takes at the feet of their rabbi. So it's not just that she's sitting around doing Bible study and having a worship experience and her sister is in the, is in the kitchen prepping and serving practically. Um, it's that Mary has broken social convention by assuming a position that in this day and age was reserved exclusively for men. Uh, she's kind of breaking the, the barriers here. She's sort of saying like, why shouldn't I? 
be called a disciple also. And Jesus was revolutionary in his approach toward women. Uh, he, is a, he is a feminist in, in, in the truest, purest form of that word. He's someone that would elevate the position of women, recognize their humanity. And he's someone that, that will actually defend Mary's controversial choice to learn at the feet of Jesus and become a full disciple here. Part of what Martha is saying is like, hey, uh, get back in your place. Like you, you're, you're kind of creating controversy here and I need your help. Um, so she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. And um, that's a little bit of a clunky translation. Um, in Greek, this, this actually says Martha was distracted or anxious with much serving. She's busy. Her hands don't know what it's like to be idle. She's got lots of things to do. And if you're a type two, uh, you have a problem with this. You identify this so much because you have a hard time saying no to the people you love. You just say yes, you just say yes, you just say yes, you just show up. I mean, this Saturday, you're planning on helping a friend move and you're also gonna bake cookies for your, your daughter's uh, you know, dance troupe and you're also gonna show up to your neighbor because she's got a cancer diagnosis and you've got meal prepared for them and, and you, you've got all these things planned all the time and you are a little bit distracted with much serving. And this is the pace at life you live. And you know what twos have a hard time doing? Being depleted. Because they fear. Remember, they fear. If I can't be useful, I'm not lovable. And if I get too tired, if I get too depleted to be useful, well, then no one will love me. And so it becomes a really anxious position to be in. And she came to, to Jesus, and here she's going to offer some unsolicited advice to Jesus, because again, that's what twos do. Here's what I think you ought to do. Here, this is a little helpful piece of advice to you, Jesus. He said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? And if you're a two, you can totally relate. Why is it that we're the ones on the setup crew? Why is it that we're the ones doing all the stuff? Why is it we're always the ones in the kitchen working? Can't somebody just show up for me like I show up for them? Can't somebody just help me the way I help everybody else? And this is what she actually says to Jesus. Tell her to help me. Also interesting to note, she's not asked for help from her sister. We don't get that. Maybe she has, but, but it would be a very two thing to do to expect that everybody else can read your mind like you can read theirs. Now we know you are so intuitive. You are so in tune with people around you. You know what they need before they ask for it. And that's your spiritual gift. It's amazing. That's what makes you you, okay? But not everybody can do that. <laughs> and so you have to actually be in touch enough with yourself to know, hey, I need some help here. I can't do this all by myself. And listen to how Jesus answers her. And if you're a two, this is a little triggering. It's gonna anger you a little bit. Martha. Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Um, and there's a little word play here. You've got to get the scene of lots of plates of food. And, and, and when Jesus says she's chosen what is better, um, he's referencing like she has picked the right dish. There's a lot of dishes out here, Martha. Thank you for this incredible spread. We are amazed that short notice, you could pull all of this together. But she's, she's picked the best thing. Because what's needed here is not much serving. It's to sit and to learn, to become my disciple, to sit at my feet and receive love, recognition, honor, value, because of who you are, not because of what you do. And this is a big struggle for type twos. Jesus invites her to find the thing she's searching for in all of her serving, love, acceptance, and worth. And you don't need to do anything to find it except be willing to receive it from Jesus. So let's talk this out. Three thoughts, and we're going to move quickly through this. Number one, how can you be real with yourself? Um, helpers, givers, listen to me, type twos. You need to learn to rest. You need to learn self-care. You need to learn to slow down, to put it down, 
to stop striving and running about. You need to learn uh, to, to take care of yourself. Healthy type twos learn to serve others while still tending to their own needs. And this will protect you from the resentment that's gonna build, that's gonna rot your heart in relationships. And, and this is how Jesus did this. He modeled for this so well. Jesus often retreated away to, to solitary places. You see him leaving the, the needs of the crowds, particularly when he was feeling depleted. Now listen to me. If Jesus Christ had limits and he needed seasons of solitude where he could replenish, you know, fill his tank, receive from God, not be about serving, helping, doing all the time, how much more do you need that? And I mean, type twos, man, you are the type. You will work yourself to death for the people that you love. You will light yourself on fire to keep everybody else warm. But you need to learn to stop and to rest and to take care of yourself. You need a break every once in a while. And if you have a type two in your life, demand it for them. Require it for them. No, you won't. I'm sorry, Saturday morning, you won't do a single thing. I've got the kids covered. I will take them to their games. I will take them. I'll make sure the orange slices get to go where the orange slices need to go. I can handle this for a second. You go away and you, you can't expect them to relax in that environment. They can't do it. Type twos cannot relax with dishes in the sink or laundry that needs to be folded or a floor that needs to be cleaned. They have to get up and do it. So you know what? Get them out of the environment. I have a friend that sends his type two wife to a hotel once a month. She doesn't even spend the night. She just goes to a hotel to sit around because she has to do it for her own sanity. You know what? And that's a small price to pay, to be honest with you, to get them some rhythms of rest, relaxation, replenishment. How do you get connected to Jesus? You've got to do it. Find your value and worth, not dependent on what you do for everybody else. Number two, how can you be real with God? Type two helpers, listen. God loves you unconditionally. There's no conditions on his love for you. You don't need to earn it. You long to hear that you're wanted and loved. You long, this is why you serve. You're trying to find satisfaction to this core longing. But you can find the ultimate answer to this in Christ. Because no other relationship is ever going to satisfy you as fully or as completely. Jesus loves you unconditionally. There is no give-to-get system. It is a system of unmerited grace. And type twos have a hard time recognizing this core sin of pride. So you need to check your motives and check them often. Here's a question I want you to ask. For whose sake am I doing this? Why am I doing this right now? Am I doing this because I know I was built to serve and it's my joy and delight to be able to do it? Or am I doing this because I hope in some weird subconscious way to place that person in my debt or to be the person that is seen serving? Um, type twos love to get credit for what they've done. They love the accolades. They love the appreciation. Listen, that's not bad. It's not bad to want to be appreciated for what you do, but you've got to check your motives and check them often. Um, it's a gift. Uh, you remove the conditions from your love. You give it as a gift. No requirement of repayment. And healthy twos have learned to give their love, help, and generosity as a gift of grace because they recognize they've received that grace freely from Jesus. All right, number three. How can you be more real with other people? Um, here's what I want to tell you. Resist the temptation to be the hero in someone else's story. Resist the temptation to take control of their life and to do it for them. I want you to learn to ask this question. Is this mine to pick up right now? Is this mine? Is this mine to pick up right now? Uh, should, should I be actually involving myself with this? Um, one of the books I read poked at the way unhealthy twos will never let you forget how they helped you. Listen, resist the temptation to call attention to the way that you're helping the people around you. I know you want to be noticed. I know you want to be seen. Um, but what's happening there is it's kind of weird. It, it weirds people out. It, it makes them feel like you're keeping score and you're placing them in some kind of debt arrangement when you're always like, remember that time I helped you? Hey, how's that gift I gave you working out? And, and subconsciously what you're doing there is you're trying to remind everybody else around you how important you are. Listen, let it go. Either they will recognize how wonderful you are and how much you help them and they'll be grateful for that or they won't. And, and you shouldn't try and control that. You shouldn't try and manipulate that. It's gonna take you to a dark place when you try and squeeze your needs out of the people around you. Learn to let that go. Find your satisfaction from Jesus.
Is this mine to pick up? And, and here's the thing. You are so gifted at intuiting others' feelings and needs, but it doesn't give you permission to fix their problem for them. I want you to learn to ask, because you could show up in someone else's story, and you might think you know what it is that they need, um, but learn to ask, and learn to accept no thank you as a polite decline of what it is you wanna do to help them without it feeling like rejection. You don't need to be needed to be loved. People love you and appreciate you for who you are. Um, all right, my final thought. I won't end here. Twos, I think that you struggle with boundaries. I think you struggle with setting boundaries for yourself, learning to say no when you need to say no. And I think you struggle um, with re respecting the boundaries of other people too. I, I heard a story recently where um, someone had a, had, had a type two parent and they came to visit. And this, this person was like, man, you know, they were like, oh, uh, you're in this new home that you just bought. Wow, this is great. What are you hoping to do next? And this person was talking about how they really wanted a fence. They have dogs. They, they, you know, their next project is I'm going to build a fence. And um, two days later, a construction crew showed up. And she said, what's going on? Oh, um, your, your parent hired me to build you a deck. He thinks you need a deck. Now, listen, <laughs> this is awkward. Okay, because I, I couldn't afford the deck. I think the deck is delightful, the deck is great, but I was saving to build the fence. The fence is actually the need that I have, not the deck. And it, it seems kind of like this bizarre overreach. It's like the help is good and extravagant and great, but aren't there like strings here? Isn't this like a form of control? And it feels kind of icky. Um, twos, respect the boundaries of the people in your life. Don't grab the wheel of their story. We know you're so helpful. You are so helpful. We know that you have this, this supernatural ability to feel everybody else's needs around you. Um, but learn to respect those boundaries. Um, learn to say no. In our culture, we strive to say yes to everything and anything, but we can't do it all. And this is what Jesus is inviting Martha to do. Martha, one thing is important here. Don't forget to say yes to the most important thing. And that's your relationship with Jesus. Um, type twos, you need to learn to find a relationship with Jesus that isn't dependent on what you do for him. Learn to be loved by him. Learn to sit at his feet. Let him whisper acceptance and, 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 and to, to cherish you and appreciate you and value you just because you're his. Let's pray. God, we love who you are. Uh, we thank you for the twos in our lives that show up in our, in our stories, that, that serve so wonderfully and they so beautifully reflect your heart to this world. They're helpers, they're givers, they're generous. We thank you for them. Help them to find their way towards the unconditional love of Jesus as we all do the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Sweetheart, you look a little tired When did you last eat? Call me to make yourself right at home Stay as long as you need Tell me something wrong If something's wrong You can count on me You know, I'll take my heart clean apart If it helps yours be it's okay if you can't find the words Let me take your coat and this weight off of your shoulders Like a force to be reckoned with A mighty ocean or a gentle kiss I will love you with every single thing Take the oxygen straight out of my own chest I know exactly how the rule goes Put my mask on first no, I don't want to talk about my 
Good. 
affection, our devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus, our affection, our devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus, our affection, our devotion poured out. Church, thank you again for joining us today for Terraform Online. I just want to remind you there's all kinds of resources in the Enneagram, um, about the Enneagram and the Terraform app. I do want to hear, what is your type? Talk to us. Let us know. I want to know, uh, as you go on this journey of self-discovery, I want to know. I want to know what type you are. So tell me. Send me a text message. Give me a call. Drop me an email. I think it would be great. Uh, we are recording more podcasts each week, and so this week we'll have the Type 2s. Uh, available for you uh, probably by Wednesday or Thursday we'll have that posted and that's a lot of fun we're learning a lot about the people in our in our church community and the people in our lives um, from their perspective and so we are looking for type threes fours fives or in the coming weeks here and uh, man especially type fours and fives you're hard to find so if you're a type four or type five let me know who you are so we can get you on the podcast and uh, man God bless you have an incredible week